Hi viewers, this is Mia Habib and uh, I am presenting the second lecture of my rock and mineral series and today's topic is uh, minerals used in renewable energy harvesting, transportation, storage and saving. Let us start from the renewable energy, the definition of renewable energy. I must tell you that I am not the expert of renewable energy, but I have done a lot of work on the uh, minerals used in different type of renewable energy. So, how we define renewable energy? Renewable energy is the energy produced from a source which is not depleted when used, such as wind, uh, solar power, waves, tides, etc. Our discussion is focused on the following. Number one, solar energy. In solar energy, we will cover both uh, process of harvesting. Number one, concentrated solar power harvesting CSP. Number two, photovoltaic solar power PV. Then we will discuss wind energy and mineral use in energy harvesting, transportation and storage. Our discussion will also include minerals used in energy saving that is LED industry, minerals used in storage, energy storage that is lithium batteries. So, what is concentrated solar power? CSP. In this region, we mostly we come across the photovoltaic, the solar panels, but not concentrated solar power. Concentrated solar power CSP is more common, this area is more common in United States and other countries. So, concentrated solar power system generates solar power by using uh, mirrors, lenses that act as reflector of sunlight. The reflectors concentrate large areas of sunlight or a specific point at the central receiving tower. So, what does it mean that there is a central receiving tower and there is an array of mirrors or lenses around that tower several layers not only single layer several layers and these lenses or mirrors they are they are reflecting sunlight onto the central receiving tower so this concentrated sunlight then converted into heat this heat is used to produce steam which drives electric generating system or turbines to generate electricity. This is how the electricity is generated. It means in this case the sunlight is used as a source of heat and water is heated to produce steam and steam is used to run the generators, the turbines. In this photo you can see both CSP and PV on my left hand side you can see the mirrors and the lower left hand side these are the curved mirrors and right in between is the central tower and you can see the flat mirrors are arranged in several layers around the tower and they are reflecting light onto the mirror. On the right hand side you can see uh, some uh, people are installing uh, photovoltaic solar panels on a rooftop and at the bottom right side uh, a large area of a field is covered with the solar panels uh, that is photovoltaic. In this photo on the left top corner clearly you can see the central tower illuminating from the uh, from the light which is which is concentrated on this tower after reflecting from the mirrors and on the right hand side this these are the curved mirrors and lower right hand side these are flat mirrors. 
it is very interesting that in some arrays these mirrors and lenses they keep moving they follow the path of the sun, sunlight they follow the sun so all day they receive the sunlight and reflect it to the central tower this photo is on the right hand, right hand side is self explanatory uh, there is a sun with sunbeams sun, and these sunbeams are striking on the flat mirrors and they are accumulating they have been accumulated on the central tower the left hand side photo is little bit different this is another array here the reflected sunlight is focused on pipes these pipes run parallel to the mirrors and these pipe containing oil so instead of heating water in this case we are heating oil directly oil is heated to 400 degree centigrade and heat the water to steam to generate turbines so mineral used in csp concentrated solar power harvesting these are mostly glass mirrors because what are the components of the concentrated solar power these are uh, mirrors and lenses mirrors are produced from glass lenses are produced from glass so we need the glass minerals and the glass minerals are silica sand quartz calcium carbonate feldspar soda ash by the way feldspar and soda ash and ephlene cyanide these minerals are used as a fluxing material to lower the melting point of silica sand photovoltaic pv solar energy is produced by directly using photovoltaic system pv converts solar heat into direct current electricity dc electricity by using photovoltaic effect of the solar cell so in this case when you compare it with the csp uh, it this case is very different in this case in photovoltaic the sun energy is directly converted into um, electricity on the other case csp the sunlight is used as a source of heat for boiling water so solar cells made up of solar grade silicon also called photovoltaic cells convert solar light directly into electricity these are all solar panels photovoltaic solar panels uh, covering large areas in the field on the rooftop and they are very common so how the photovoltaic cells or solar cells are produced it all start from quartz quartz is a mineral which is silicon dioxide sio2 or we call it silica so this silica is converted into silicon metal so how we can convert this is a reduction process so we take out oxygen from silica silica is sio2 so we take out o2 and and produce silicon si by the way silicon is a natural element but it is interesting that we don't find silicon in the nature we don't find silicon in the earth crust we don't find silicon in any rock because as soon as the silicon form from the crystallization of magma it combines with oxygen because it has a great affinity towards oxygen it combines with oxygen and convert into silica or silicon dioxide so in this process quartz that is silica converted into silicon and this silicon is called metallurgical grade silicon or silicon metal and silicon metal is converted into solar grade silicon there is a difference between the purity in both cases and which we will discuss and this solar grade silicon is called polysilicon and polysilicon is converted into single crystal large crystal of monocrystalline silicon and monocrystalline silicon is used to produce wafers it is cut into sizes and produce very thin wafers 
and these wafers are used to produce solar cells. So, if you can see in this photo, solar cell is not a single layer of silicon, no, there are several layers, there is a base, there is a top, there is a, a layer of silicone cells uh, in between. The top layer is a glass which covers the whole solar cell and this glass is produced from silica sand. In fact, it is produced from very low iron silica sand. So, this glass is very shiny and very reflective, very clear and uh, it is uh, still produced from silica sand. <coughs> Let us start how this process goes one by one from quartz to solar silicon. Quartz SiO2 plus a source of carbon, these two things are mixed and heated at very high temperature in a vertical kiln and this temperature is around 2800 degree centigrade. This reaction produces silicon metal in form of liquid and carbon dioxide in form of a gas. The gas escape from the system, it can be accumulated as well and the silicon which is accumulated at the bottom, it cool down, crystallize and it form the silicon metal or metallurgical grade silicon. So, in the beginning the purity of quartz was someone something like 99.5 percent silica and when we produce silicon from silica, the purity of silicon at that stage, purity of the metallurgical grade silicon was 98.5 percent SI silicon and this silicon metal after intense processing converted into solar grade silicon or we call polysilicon and the purity of this polysilicon the minimum purity is 99.9999 percent silicon. You should remember that the efficiency of a solar cell depends on the purity of silicon poly, uh, polysilicon from polysilicon to monocrystalline silicon polysilicon is crushed polysilicon as the name indicates polysilicon is a silicon which is which has hundreds and thousands of tiny crystals inside a small chunk and these crystals are arranged in different directions crushed polysilicon is placed in high purity quartz crucibles why high purity quartz crucible? Because we do not want any contamination from outside. We want to avoid contamination. So, we use high purity quartz crucible. What is high purity quartz? High purity quartz is produced from natural quartz. Let us say the natural quartz initially it was 99 percent pure and after intense processing we remove so many impurities and that now the purity of the quartz is at least 99.9925 percent. This is called HPQ or high purity quartz and we produce crucible from this quartz. Melting polysilicon crucible and drawing a single large crystal of monocrystalline silicon uh, is a patented process. From monocrystalline silicon to wafers, silicon wafers, silica sand plus carbon produces silicon carbide as well. Earlier we have seen that when we mix quartz which is also silica, silica sand is also silica, we mix quartz plus source of carbon and we heat it and we produce silicon and release carbon dioxide, but this process is little bit different. In this case instead of releasing carbon dioxide, the carbon is at carbon is combined with the silicon and we produce silicon carbide SIC. Silicon carbide is a material, it is uh, an abrasive and refractory material used in cutting tools, abrasives, etcetera in the industry. Silicon carbide is used in producing silicon carbide wires and silicon carbide wires are used for cutting wafers from the monocrystalline silicon because the silicon carbide is harder than silicon metal 
So, silicon carbide wires are used to, to produce thin wafers. Before the invention of this method, uh, we were using the diamond blades and using diamond blades we lose a lot of waste because the diamond blades, the wheels where the diamond blades are inserted and they are thick. So, we produce a lot of wastage. Here is the silicon carbide wires cutting the silicon wafers and these silicon wafers are used to produce silicon cells. Let us discuss the minerals used in wind energy uh, actually wind energy power harvesting. It looks like the wind energy or wind turbine is something very simple. It has rotors, blades and it just rotates with, with the wind, but it is not. You can see one single blade of wind turbine, mainly it is, it is produced from uh, fiberglass. On the right hand side, there is a picture showing the comparison between a single blade and an aeroplane A380. Mineral use in wind energy power harvesting. Conventionally, high speed generators with gearbox system, they were used typically for onshore system. But more recently, direct drive system DDS without gearbox, especially important for offshore wind farms. So, instead of a gearbox, now this these kind of turbines which are used offshore, they are direct drive. Fiberglass minerals for wind turbine blades, they are silica sand, feldspar, kaolin, limestone, fluorspar, fluorspar is fluorite, borates, carbon fibers. For wind turbine towers, we need concrete and concrete needs cement plus aggregates and fiberglass minerals. Use of PMG, PMG is permanent magnets instead of a gearbox. In last few years, scientists introduced a system based on rare earth permanent magnets. Before, what was used? It was a gearbox. So, rare earth permanent magnets which has reduced the maintenance cost and improved the electric generation. The switch company produces PMG for wind turbine and produce 3.5 megawatt. This PMG used 2000 kg of high energy neodymium based permanent magnet material. Neodymium is a rare earth, heavy rare earth material. It is mixed with iron. Uh, and boron. Let us discuss little bit about the future photovoltaic minerals. It is called graphene. The work is still going on on graphene. It is produced from graphite, natural mineral graphite. Graphite is a black layered minerals, very soft and the layers can be splitted they can we can take out the layers one by one by using our fingernail or by using a uh, by using a needle graphene is a material produced from graphite a single sheet of carbon arranged in a hexagonal honeycomb style and this single sheet is of um, atomic size it is not millimeter or micron, it is, it is on the atomic scale. It is a million times thinner than human hair and 200 times stronger than steel, much more conductive than copper. That is why we call it the miracle of advanced technology. It can convert light of any wavelength to electric current. It is interesting to know that in the photovoltaic system, it is certain wavelength of the solar light that is converted into electricity, but in this case light of any wavelength can be converted into electricity. Researchers are working 
on a number of potential applications from faster computer chips and flexible touch screen, super efficient solar cells and desalination membranes. We cannot see the graphene with our eyes because it is so thin even with a microscope we need very very special instruments to see to observe uh, graphene. Minerals for energy storage and transportation. Energy storage means to capture the energy produced at one time for use at a later time. Researchers are trying to find ways towards affordable high performing long lasting batteries for the next generation of electrically driven vehicles. We need energy storage for smartphones, laptop, iPads, etc. And without modern lithium ion batteries, it was impossible. Lithium is used in cathode and graphite is used in anode in lithium batteries. Minerals in energy saving LED industry. It is very interesting that a traditional 60 watt in condensed bulb would produce about 750 to 1000 lumens. Lumens is a measure of light power, but 95 percent of this energy used to create this light would typically be wasted in heat. Modern LED lights are much more thermally efficient and can now produce between 50 to 100 lumens per watt. Uh, is in normal working conditions and they do not produce heat. High purity alumina SPA and single crystal sapphire are the main requirements for LED production. So, where we get high purity alumina? Sapphire is a mineral, sapphire is a natural mineral, but sapphire is also produced synthetically. High purity alumina is produced from kaolin. By the way, kaolin is hydrated aluminum silicate. So, there is alumina in a kaolin. So, kaolin is used to produce high purity alumina, but this technology is still restricted. There are only few companies who are producing high purity alumina from kaolin. Mainly, kaolin is used to produce ceramics and fiberglass, <coughs> red mud, industrial alumina. Industrial alumina is produced from bauxite. So, this is a source of alumina, and from this alumina, aluminum metal is produced. But there are one or two companies which used this industrial alumina to produce high purity alumina. And from naphthalene cyanide, there is a Russian company who attempted to produce high purity alumina from naphthalene cyanide. Let us see the use of uh, minerals used in various uh, renewable energy sectors. So, energy harvesting and generation that is solar panel and wind turbines, what minerals are we needed? Feldspar, silica sand, iron oxide, bauxite, quartz, rare earth and in the rare earth we need there are two kind of rare earth elements. Uh, light rare earth and heavy rare earth, but in this case we need heavy rare earth H R E E, silicon carbide, kaolin, graphite, fluorite, barite, diatomite. If you remember in the last lecture I told you what is diatomite. Diatomite is an amorphous silica uh, and diatomite is produced from diatoms. Diatoms are unicellular uh, organisms living in the ocean. So, when they die, their hard parts are accumulated to form that might. Energy transportation and storage, batteries, electric motor, fuel cells, capacitors, recuperation system, thermal power. Minerals used, rutile, borate, zircon, graphite, lithium minerals, rare earth, carbonate, apatite and saltpeter. Energy saving, insulators, fluxes, refractories, electroceramics, superconductors and LEDs. 
मिनरल यूज सिलिका सेल वर्मिकोलाइट डाइटमाइट एपेटाइट सिलिकन कार्बाइट कॉलिन बॉक्साइट रेयर अर्थ मिनरल्स लिथियम मिनरल्स सिरकन सिलिमिनाइट एंडोलोसाइट केनाइट मुलाइट सिलिमिनाइट एंडोलोसाइट केनाइट एंड मुलाइट दीज आर ऑल एलोमिनस मिनरल्स सो थैंक यू वेरी मच एक्चुअली दिस स्लाइड वॉज गिवन टू बी बाय डॉक्टर माई फ्रेंड डॉक्टर रायनर हॉस फ्रॉम जर्मनी एंड आई एम थैंकफुल टू हिम and please i will request you if you like my presentations uh, you should like like them and uh, uh, let me know write down some comments so i can improve my presentations and please subscribe my channel and push the bell icon so you can get all my incoming presentations in time Thank you very much. Bye.